And there we are. Hey. Now we're live, finally. Tonight, <laughs> he is an artist. He is a, an automotive uh, pinstriper. He is uh, a guy who has built one of the most famous, if not the most famous, uh, stretch limo custom vans in the world. And he's joining us live tonight. His name is Ivan Benick. Ivan, welcome. How you doing, bud? Pretty good. You might want to scooch over a little bit there. Um, let me this just... Way or that way? The other way. There yeah. you go. Now we can see all of you. Okay. All um, right. Good thing I'm on a rolling chair. Hang on. I'm going to roll it over a bit okay. because... Otherwise, I'll crash into my tripod. All there right. you go. How's that? Just fine. You look you look beautiful. <laughs> Just like your van. I don't know <laughs> if people um, are familiar with, you know, not everybody may know what the Cosmic Cruiser is. And uh, we're going to show some video of it tonight. We're going to show people uh, a still image of it. Let me just bring a shot of it up here. There it is. That's the Cosmic shot. Cruiser. There you go. So that's pretty cool. And I apologize for the technical problems we're having tonight. We're just working out some uh, some issues with audio and video, but we've got it running, and it, we're not quite up to speed on where we need to be with all of the technical stuff, but we're going to get this thing done for you. So let me just uh, come back here, and we'll we'll join Ivan from his studio in Windsor, Ontario. Ivan, first of all, tell me a little bit about um, how, how you first built the cruiser. What was it that, that was the inspiration behind the whole thing? Well, uh, the inspiration for the whole thing actually was in uh, 1976 when I um, went to my first van nationals. And uh, to, to get your focus on it, there was 6,000 vans there one weekend. That's a big show. That's uh, a big eye-opener even for me because i would never, ever seen a crowd like that in my life. So I showed up with my original van that, uh, that I airbrushed live at Detroit Autorama, and uh, that was my real honest-to-goodness showpiece. So... Uh, everybody was freaking out over that because it was in all the magazines like just the month before it came out and all of a sudden this Ivan guy is on the scene. So then I'm looking around and I'm, I'm seeing a huge crowd around this uh, probably 1969 Chevy van. And I'm trying to figure out why is everybody all over it, right? You you could barely see the van. So I walk right over, and sure enough, it's a chopped, and uh, I don't really think it was channeled, but it was chopped uh, at least six inches, all kinds of radical bodywork. It wasn't even finished. It was in primer, uh, white, I believe it was, in or it might have been lacquer. But that's the day I realized that um, vanners like to see radical stuff. And uh, we had to just uh, get going. So I came home, and on the way home, I says to my wife, I said, listen, I need to build another van. I need to build a radical van. Did you see those people? They were going crazy over a radical van. So, uh, and she says, well, yeah, go ahead, but just sell this one, and you can start that one. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, uh so that was a, a good one. She gave me the, uh, the, the go ahead. And then the following week, the, my personal van that had Ivan splashed on the side of it, um, that went for sale in Toronto. Now, I wasn't thinking small Windsor market. Who in the hell wants Ivan's van in Windsor? And uh, I sold that van. And uh, uh, I think the guy had to go back home. Back in them days, you couldn't just transfer that kind of money. Mm -hmm. So buddy went back home and three months later brought me the rest of my money. And, uh, I gave him the van and said, yo, 
and got started on the cruiser. And it is, I mean, it's radical. It's, it's very, very long. How long is it? Well, we did measure it uh, for one of your actual, your shows and uh, my grandson and I, and I was to tears. It's only 32 and a half feet long. <laughs> That's all. Then, uh, somewhere down the line, I, I, it started becoming 34 feet. So then forever it was 34 feet. And I honestly forgot how long it was. And then I actually measured it before one of the shows, and I went, oops, oops. <laughs> now, now you were invited to come to the Ottawa Gatineau International Auto Show, uh, which right. was the last physical show that was supposed to happen in 20 – it's been so long with all this COVID stuff. Yeah, 20. 2020. 2020, and, 2020. Uh, last year. Right, March of 2020. and. We were like, what was it, a day or two away from opening or whatever it was? It was, uh, it was yeah, it, it was actually two days before I'm supposed to go out there. Right. So and it was on a Friday. I believe it was on a Friday that you guys told me everything's canceled and I was supposed to leave the house on um, Monday morning. Yeah, to come all the way up to Ottawa to show the van off. Now, Baggy. I yeah, a while back, um, we did get together and we shot some video, and I want to share that with our viewers right now. I'm just going to okay. run a little video here um, just to give people a taste of what the Cosmic Cruiser is all about. This thing is radical. No, I'm not a writer. Okay. Cosmic Cruiser. I've seen it a hundred times. I uh, still enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a that was a wild ride. That was a great day. That was fun, eh? That was, yeah. Because I'd never, you, you I'd, I'd never actually been for a ride in the cruiser until that day. Even though you and I had met many times at, at car shows, and that we'd even shot the thing before, but I'd, I'd never actually gone for a ride. So that was a real treat. And, and you didn't even know it was going to happen. No, I didn't. And I and it was awesome to take a, a ride down the EC Row Expressway in in Windsor that day. Uh, it was kind of, you know, hard to work you into it. But slowly, <laughs> I let it down on you. I says, hey, how about a highway buzz? <laughs> <laughs> so we buzzed the EC Row. We didn't break any land speed records or anything like that. But um. At least you got to um, to feel what it's like at highway speed. What it's really meant to do is, you know, Oops. 65 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour, and go anywhere you want to go and not ever for one second worry about, we never touch this, never ever worry about a blowout that's going to get you going into the ditch. <laughs> 
It is a cruiser. That's another, uh, it's, story. It's a cruiser. That's what it is. It's a cruiser. Yeah. And it's a nice feeling to know that you can go uh, at a highway speed and absolutely not worry about a blowout. It's not going to upset you at all. Yeah. All it does is whack the tires. That's it. Yeah. So give me some of the specs on it. Like what was it originally built on? What kind of chassis? Um, well, originally the van was, uh, was a GMC three quarter ton. So we, we ripped out all the three quarter ton stuff right away and replaced it all. Uh, basically the, the front end got, um, uh, you know, just got a half ton front end in it. Right. And then the back end originally, uh, got a Corvette rear end in it. So I ran a Corvette rear end in it until about, uh, 1982. And I had initially, I had a few problems with the big wheels that I had. And I said, you know what? This is not a good idea in a van. So bottom line, mechanically, the Corvette rear end couldn't handle uh, the weight. Just yeah. the sheer design of um, the rear end being on a swing arm. Uh, and if I can show you this, look, the minute that, uh, I'll go this way, the minute that because it's on just a swing arm, not being held together by nothing else. The second that you hit the outside of the vehicle hits any kind of a road um, bump or anything, it does this. It literally kicks the outside up if it's a big offset. So uh, essentially what happened is there was just too much wear and tear on the the bolts themselves. and then, on a, um, on a 3,000 mile trip, I lost a bearing and uh, that wasn't good in the rear end. And by the time I fixed that, uh, the van made it home another 3,000 miles. And uh, on the first ride around the block, <laughs> that I think the same bearing or on the other side, the bearing went. So I don't know if it was the same one or not, but that was in 82. So that's when I started already thinking about, hey, dummy, do it, do it. <laughs> so, what, what's, know, what, so what's under the hood again? Uh, uh, nine, about a nine, uh, 1971 uh, 454. Um, it's 30 over. And just in the last, I think, five years ago, um, I put in a roller cam in it. And it's got a nice... Uh, tunnel ram on it and um uh, uh it had twin 600 hollies on it but then i wanted to detune it a little bit because just before the um just before the cam i was having a little bit of a problem because the van sits around a lot and uh, i was having problems with you know starting uh the a little bit too much fuel uh, this and that and the other thing, and it, and it and it all relates to function of the engine. So as soon as I changed the cam, everything seemed to equal out because the van automatically turns over that much faster. To uh, for starting purposes, and it's much easier on the starter now and everything. So that's what we did: roller cam and um, you know the way it was built is supposed. To, oh yeah, rectangular port heads. So it had the real good high performance heads on it. Actually, cast iron jobs from the fa the factory uh, uh, GM heads, which everybody copied later on anyway. But mm -hmm. the good heads, and the, everything works. You know, at highway speed at 3,500 RPM, everything works proper. Like you know, the tunnel ram. That's when it really works and pulls good. Yeah, lots of fun. So because you couldn't come to the auto show, nobody could come to the auto show in 2020. I thought it was important to to get you involved in what we're doing uh, now, which is a virtual auto show online at cool. uh, OttawaAutoShow.com. And mm -hmm. it's also called Autos 360. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's the, the format of this thing. There's some 360 videos available uh -huh. online there. Uh, we're we're trying to 
bring the features that were going to be at the auto show to the people through, um, you know, a, a cyber universe uh, and, and do a virtual version of the auto show. But this thing's going to go on all year. Uh, oh, cool. The, the virtual auto show. So mm -hmm. we're producing content regularly. So I'm going to be coming back to you over and over again to uh, hopefully, if you're so inclined to, to accommodate us, to, to do more videos and not just talk about the cruiser because I want to talk about other car stuff, car culture with you because you're not just a, a one trick pony. You're a real artist. You uh, you're a body guy, you, you an auto body guy, you're a custom builder, you do a lot of stuff. And and all of those things have been folded into the cruiser. And uh, that's why I want to talk now about the, the artwork that's on the sides of the van and on the hood. Um, tell me about all the all the paint work that you've done on that thing, because it is really extensive. Artwork. <laughs> artwork right behind you there. <laughs> um. The uh, actually the artwork, and I just um, I, I just gonna remind you for a second here. But the artwork that's on the cruiser, the general concept of everything that's on there. I mean, I touched up a few things here and there. I changed a few girls. You know, I got rid of my ex girlfriend on there. All that other kind of good stuff. <laughs> right. See, I think I, maybe I, get, I, I get rid of a girl. I kind of erase her really quick. <laughs> and um, anyway, uh, long story short, the paint on the cruiser this coming month, I think, is actually 20 years old. I did it 20 years ago this summer. Wow, that's it's a long time. Yeah. For a paint and job. I'm telling you, I've been kicking myself in the butt. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. I've actually been thinking about painting it again with something new and fresh so that, you know, all the thousands and thousands of people that seen it already, even my Vanner uh, fans and all that kind of stuff, uh, you know, they're a little bored, you know, like I'm sure they've seen everything 13,000 times already. Yeah. So I'm thinking if I repainted it, I get them back a little bit. Right. Well, it's a lot of work. You know, oh, it's kind of hard to erase what you got. You know, it's not the same as erasing a girlfriend of the size of the van. Yeah. <laughs> because it's an extension of you. Yes, exactly. And, and you know, the one side, the passenger side, uh, it's definitely all about my life. Every, every piece of that artwork talks about how I got started. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, you know, the first one was always, and I removed it since then, was a girl on a motorcycle, you know, uh, uh, because I started painting girls on motorcycles. That was my first expression in automotive art was I painted my bike and the, the bikers, hey, I like that. Can you do something for me? And next thing you know, I'm in somebody's living room airbrushing something and then going to work at midnight so at GM, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's how it started. But uh, long story short, yeah, I, I'm, I've been really itching about doing a brand new paint job on it. So tell me about the paint job that is on it right now. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on there. You've got some some image, well, images from from the, your home country. Yes. Um, from different well, events. Basically, you basically if, we start, if we start on the uh, – uh, on the passenger side, like I started uh, uh, telling you about it, but uh, uh, it, it goes into uh, the very first van, uh, one of the very first real show vans that I painted uh, for a guy in North Carolina. That's uh, um, in the artwork. Then um, the, the number one Harley in the country at the time, 1976, that's on the van. The cruiser stretched out a couple other Real, real honest to goodness show winning vans on the side of it. And then the Ivan Castle, uh, the big castle that it relates and talks to my very first van that I sold to a guy in Sweden. And then, of course, you know, the um, the um, sketchbook, open sketchbook with a 3D 
uh, car on it on the quarter panel, and that's the car I'm currently building. I haven't physically gone back to it yet, but um, it's been on the floor for about 10 years. I started it 10, 11 years ago, and uh, everything's there except the time, you know. But I've mm -hmm. officially, I'm officially retired, and I'm working on my own stuff. No more nothing for nobody. <laughs> Just my own stuff. It's a but, wonderful decision I made. Yeah, and, and this, but you, I mean, you have worked on a lot of stuff for people over the years, uh, because as I mentioned earlier, you're a you're an auto body guy. You're, a, uh, I mean, you can weld. You can you 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 can build. You're a builder as well. I'm building right now. I'm building. Uh, you've seen it on on my um, Facebook page. I'm building a fifty five Studebaker that was uh, originally designed by a real famous um, um, automotive designer. He's actually, you know, designer, designer, like head of design at, at GM at one point. Larry mm -hmm. Erickson is the Godzilla fame builder or designer. Godzilla. Remember the car? Godzilla? Godzilla? Yeah. About 25 years ago, Godzilla was uh, built or maybe even more now. And then... Um, and then a few years later, he drew this uh, this car up. And um, a friend of mine, um, Jim Bailey, he's a auto body guru, uh, metal shaper. Mm -hmm. Okay, metal shaper slash customizer. So he got the job of building it. And then um, the project was abandoned. And about five years ago. This is like 20 years, 25 years ago, five years ago, I got a hold of the car um, and uh, I'm thinking I have to finish it because it was just too nice, nice of a design uh, to let go. And uh, it was a really good start on it. Um, I've got some of the original sketches um, and the car was executed right to the sketch, but then uh, it's in my hands now. So I'm tweaking a few things that... Um, uh, to my liking and uh, my design, and uh, we shall see soon. I'm going to keep going until it's done. So hopefully, uh, hopefully by Christmas, I'm thinking I should be squirting some color on it. Because mm -hmm. right now we're I, I set the body just uh, the other day. Put I put the floor in. Now I got to decide whether or not I'm actually going to cut up some more and lower the car some more or whatever it's chopped like i don't know six inches or something like that it's got a lot a lot of nice uh touches to it now the cruiser the cruiser kind of sat for quite a while it didn't you, it didn't get a lot of exposure you were going to bring it to ottawa and you were getting it ready to bring and i know you were yeah. really busting your tail to no. um, to, to get the thing ready to go. Tell me all the stuff that you had done to sort of freshen it up and get it ready for the Ottawa show. Well, uh, as you know, if, it, if the vehicle's 30 years old, uh, lots of things that show the age were 30 years old. So the first thing to go was the vinyl roof. The vinyl roof started, uh, uh, you know, literally falling apart. So uh, it was all right if you're standing nice to the next to the van and, not looking up, but if you climbed on the chair or you were six foot three, you could see that the roof needed some attention. So we stripped the roof right down to bare metal and um, and uh, I, I, I re pour 15 it, the whole thing, resealed it. And that took a way longer than I thought it was going to take. And then because we did that, we changed a few things. The guy says, come on, I haven't shaved the drip rails. You know, next thing you know, I'm shaving the drip rolls. I didn't want to do it, but at the end of the day, it looks a lot better. It's a big improvement. I shaved the drip rails on it, and uh, so now it's considerably smoother looking in that department. Here's in the bulky half-inch drip rail on the side of it and grows into the vinyl roof. We went right back to the original, absolutely original steel work that was on it. And it's all bare metal and perfect. So we're good. And then, of course, I had to touch up the paint. 
because I dug into so much of the upper body. And uh, we re-clear coated it complete. And we're ready to go, but there was nothing to do. <laughs> yeah, because then two days before, Rick calls you and says, I'm sorry, Ivan, there is no auto show this year. <laughs> sorry yeah. about that. And Just you, know, you know all that money that you spent on your roof? Well, you'll get it back sooner or later. <laughs> oh, man. It's oh, all man. good. Oh, man. And we had... Uh, I, I don't know. I don't remember the last time I worked that hard in a long time. Every single day for like a month and a half, seven days a week, except one Sunday, I kind of hit a wall and I had to act my age and stay at home on the couch. <laughs> well, you know, all the feedback we were getting, because, you know, for folks who don't know, I, I do I do get involved with the Ottawa Gatineau International Auto Show. And we were getting a ton of feedback about your really? van, man. People were really excited about it coming to Ottawa. And if I'm not mistaken, it would have been the first time ever for that, for the Cosmic Cruiser to, to be seen at an auto show in the Ottawa region. Is that right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. We, we kind of blew by. We had a chance to go to Ottawa one year. Uh, years and years ago, but uh, I don't even remember if they actually had an honest to goodness car show. So the Cosmic Cruiser kind of drove by Ottawa, straight down to 401 in Quebec City. So all the folks in Quebec City seen it. <laughs> well, man, it but was good. Was, people were pumped. Way back in '81, it, it, it was going to be a big deal. Uh, yeah, you know, to see it, it was a big deal for me. I got mm -hmm. I got rightfully excited because. I mean, here is a car show. It's a new car show. And I'm taking an art piece that I made over the last 40 years to a new car show. Right. You know what I mean? That was a, a that was a, that, that, that's a story that is not going to be missed. You know what I mean? We, we should be able to get some ink off of that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, you, you know, know I mean? the auto show's slogan has been the ultimate automotive experience. There you and go. That's what it is all about. Yes, the main focus is on new vehicles. And there are, I think, in any given year, there are over 30 manufacturers represented with wow. exhibits at, at the show. Wow. So it, it's it's a big deal. It's the biggest automotive event in the Ottawa region, for sure, hands down. And of course, you, you know, then you have the the other attractions, the Hollywood Star Cars exhibit, of which you were going to be a part of, and now you are a part of again in this virtual auto show. And that's because the cruiser has been featured on our television show, on other television shows, at automotive events, in magazines, newspapers, all around the world. And you've won multiple awards over the years in its different versions uh, through yeah. the last four decades or so, right? So, yeah. so tell me about all of that attention. Where has it been seen? What awards has it well, won? Over all uh, that actually, to, to, to be perfectly honest, uh, the only the only real awards I got with it was, you know, like um, Detroit Autorama, uh, you know, Best Radical or something like that. But that's only because right after that show, I said, you guys want me to come to a show. You need to pay for it. Yeah. Homie doesn't like trophies. I like groceries in my fridge. And so I'm not going to work two years, five years, 10 years, and then go out for a big ass trophy and or a plaque or something like that. I've got a few around here, yeah. but to be perfectly honest, I don't think much of them because my trophy is every time I roll out and people want to talk to me, they pay attention. They run down the street with a camera. They fall on their face because they're running down the street with a camera in their hand. You know what I mean? Everything has happened, right? 
But the main thing is for anything that's to do with auto shows, I like getting paid. So that's way back in the day. So, but magazine wise, um, a pile of magazines featured it over the years. Um, just uh, five years ago, I was in Norway and I walked into an art supply store and I walks over to the stand and I'm going, oh, wow, look at this. So I pick up the magazine, leaf through it. And sure enough, there it is. Of course, I knew that that's what it was. I knew the title and uh, there was a nice feature on the on the van. But I'm in Stavanger, Norway, in an art supply store. And the van's in a magazine there. So I was pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> that impressed me. <laughs> and, and and the big part was it was already three years out of print. You know what I mean? So these are the stragglers that were left. There were still a few magazines on the stands. And, and I found it three years after the fact. That was okay. a German magazine, Airbrush, uh, Airbrush Step by Step. It just shows the impact that it has had globally, the the, the Cosmic Cruiser, the uh, the reach that it's had, the exposure that it has had, uh, television, newspapers, magazines, everywhere, man. It's, it's uh, you know, it. I think it's sort of, when I look at it, you can definitely see that it, it has its origins in like the seventies. Right. But mm -hmm. the, the whole thing is just so over the top that it is also, well, it has seventies design cues. I think it's timeless. It, it's yeah. I, I, I kind of got lucky there, you know, <laughs> because when I, when I first started working on it, I, I really had no idea where I was going other than I wanted um, I wanted dual axles up front because I like running down the highway and knowing that I don't have to worry about a blow. -up. And I've seen cars from the before that had dual axles in the front, you know, obviously in the back too, you know, but not an eight wheeler combo. But uh, it, it, in any case, uh, that was the, the motivating factor is rebuilding the cruiser coming out the second time. So it was cosmic cruiser two. So it had to have two engines in it. It had to have, you know, dual front axles, dual rear axles. But when I got to the front end, I was kind of stuck. I wasn't even, um, I, I, I didn't even make a sketch. I, I kind of approached it like a sculpture and and built what I wanted to build and that front end the, the actual nose of it I did overnight one day after five after everybody went home I had like about five employees at the time after everybody went home I, I dug into it and built that front end uh, other than one major scoop down the side you know that big scoop that's on the side of it on the on the yeah. front end yeah uh, other than that, uh, I was saving that little spot in the corner. I wanted to do a kind of like a side headlight that would beam right through the side of the quarter panel. And um, I'm glad I didn't do that. But anyway, <laughs> that was just a uh, fly by the seat of my pants. No sketches, no nothing. Just like a sculpture, I approached it with a, with a fervor and uh, um, some tin snips, air nibbler. And that I hated that thing. <laughs> I, I don't think I could cut eight feet, eight linear feet, and it cost me fifty-six bucks for a new, um, uh, what do you call it, nibbler, like the the little piston that goes up and down like this. Yep. Oh my god, the worst tool I ever bought in my life. <laughs> I switched to shears. I'm still using the same cutters. Ten years. I got ten years out of these. Cheap shears. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, compared to 56 every eight feet. Yeah, yeah. Back in the 82, 56 bucks was quite a bit of money. <laughs> For me, it still is. <laughs> yeah. Good one. I guess working on it has to be a challenge because you need a big garage someplace, right? It It's... Long. Yeah, like I, 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 I covered that one 
a long time ago. I built a 80 foot addition to a 20 foot garage. <laughs> Isn't that more like a, an 80 foot garage attached to a 20 foot old addition? <laughs> That's it. That's yeah. it. Yep. That's what we did. It's the best thing I ever done in my in my life because uh, I, I built the garage myself. The only contractor I had was the guy that did the, the blocks, the laid the blocks, the foundation. Yeah. And then uh, uh, everything else I did by myself with one or two helpers and uh, a roofing guy. Me and him put the roof on 25 years ago and best money ever spent. Have you ever weighed it? Do you know how much it weighs? Well, I weighed it one time, but I'm not so sold on uh, on the weight. You know what I mean? I I, I really don't like it. <laughs> I I think it doesn't make sense, but it, it tells me because I had it in a trailer where we're trying to weigh it. You know what I mean? So we're I I don't remember if the math is actually 100 percent correct. I don't believe it is because it says. 10,400 pounds. That's the number that I had in my head. And uh, and that was 1985. So since then, I've changed a few things, and it should be about 80 pounds lighter. <laughs> wow. Uh, so I went into a bunch of aluminum. Yeah. So what are you, uh, you going to do with it this summer? Are you, I mean, I don't even know. Like, I guess there's some car shows on. Yeah. Um, well, some big actually, some are happening. Actually, this morning, this morning, I uh, I got news that there is an event going on, and uh, I, I forget what they even call it, but they're calling it the Canadian Nationals now, and uh, in lieu, like, the uh, Van Fest got canceled, so they couldn't get Van Fest, which would have been last week, right? So, in Tweed, Ontario... Uh, July 11th is a three day weekend with, uh, banners. So there should be about 250 of us there. Nobody knows I'm going, but I will be there. <laughs> I guess they're going to know now. <laughs> well, yeah. 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 In a few yeah. days when you, when we, tonight, when we share this, I guess they will know. I guess you do take it out from time to time anyway, through the summer to, you know, just last time I only went out two or three times. That was yeah. it because the lockdown kept us going sideways and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, I didn't want to be a bad example and cruise when I'm not supposed to be cruising. You know what I mean? So I did the responsible adult thing and I didn't take it out. I actually brought it home. Uh, I brought it home from the garage two two weeks ago. And the other day was the first time I took it out. Yesterday was the first time I took it out. I went I went to a medical supply building with you did, it. You did the adult thing? That's that's a switch. Isn't that something? <laughs> I don't know. The older you get, the more senile you get. Well, it's, <laughs> it's it's one of those things. It's like the ultimate toy, right? Your yeah. uh, your van, man. It's I just didn't feel like playing, you know, with everybody is talking all this COVID nonsense and people are barking at you. If you get even within six feet of them, you know, they're giving you looks, you know. Yeah. yeah. Everybody wants their space and all that stuff, and I just didn't feel like cruising around with all these limitations. I don't like limitations. Yeah. Well, me either. Um, COVID certainly took the fun out of the, no. <laughs> of the car hobby. Didn't it? It just killed everything. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. Well, yeah I, hope we, I don't know. We're out of it. Yeah. We're, we seem to be, well, at least the government seems to be, uh, I guess, turning, getting ready to turn the page a bit. I just, I just hope that it's a, a sign of I hope so. I hope they open the border. I had uh, July 11th would have been the Nationals in um, Wisconsin. I definitely wanted to go to that. And uh, that's 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 a good six, 700-mile ride. 
and I would have been gone, but I can't get over the border. Border's closed. Yeah. You're staying at home, son. Yeah. And then, of course, two weeks in a hotel or even three days in a hotel with plastic all over the walls is not my thing. No, that's no fun either. So no. it just kind of, that just cancels everything right there for me. I'm not yeah. doing that. So I'm just going to stay home, which is yeah. what ultimately they want anyway, right? They don't want you to travel. So I guess they're just going to make it so darn miserable. You can't go anywhere without suffering. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I hope the border opens because we've got a few things on the go, a uh, few things planned, and it should be really big. We got a big mm -hmm. thing coming on, but I can't tell you until it happens. Because, you know, if it doesn't happen, it's like wishful thinking. <laughs> right. Well, that's okay because we can we can chat about it, you know, the next time you're on. Well, we can definitely mm -hmm. announce it. it. It would be a big thing. Okay. Later on. Yeah, well, if, we'll if it happens, that. I'm pretty sure it will. So you know how it goes. Yeah, whatever I wish and pray I can get, I usually get. <laughs> <laughs> All I got to do is use the power of positive thinking, and it happens. So, are you? Is there more work to be done on the on the van this summer or through the year? You get you going to do some stuff to the interior? I or? don't know the. Uh, I'm, I, you know, um, like I said, I've been definitely going flip-flopping back and forth about painting it again. So I've had an idea for about a good five years of what I really wanted to do to make it go viral about 37 times more than it ever has. Uh, so it's a, a completely new theme and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I don't know. It's one of those things that do I really need it to go viral again? You know what I mean? Like it's already on TV anyway. By the way, we had a commercial that we shared a little while ago. It's going to be on direct TV next month. It's getting some more right. play. Expanded play. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, you know, on social media, it with our stuff that we've, we've published it it's certainly one of the top videos of all time on our channels and anytime it runs on television with the sst car show it it generates calls for sure oh yeah yeah so cool. yeah it um uh you know it's run a few times over the past year and it always well, generates we got, we got we got the summer she's cleaned the carpets down all that kind of stuff you see it yeah. And um, just let me know, just like yesterday when you called me about, or two days ago, you called me about this. Yeah, come on. Whenever you're ready, it will do. Whatever yeah. we mean you talked about in private, we can do. Cool. We we'll do. We we'll do with the. Um, remember uh, what I told you about the um, uh, the twenty minute challenge, 20, 20 minute painting. Yep. Yep. When you're with the other artists and you have to, yeah, uh, yeah, paint that a was, picture in that 20 was minutes. a hoot. Yeah. Paint, paint a picture in 20 minutes. As a matter of fact, one of them is here, but uh, one, uh, my 20 minute painting, I have it really close by, but um, uh, we can do something fun and paint too and talk. You know what I mean? We can do a camera, uh, or if you were here, you could film me, and we could put the podcast together. Yeah, but I can paint something while we're talking. I can do both. <laughs> well, that'd be that'd be. So, a, that'd, you know what I mean? While yeah. we're shooting the shit, doing a really nice car, since it's a, you're an automotive show. I told you, it's a no-brainer, honey child. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll all be coming we down. Have some fun. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like normally, the twenty-minute stuff is is uh, the, well. That challenge was uh, you got twenty minutes to paint something, right? And uh, everybody gets the same amount of paint, same colors, all that kind of good stuff. And you just paint, right? 
Well, with cars, it's a lot more difficult to do something in 20 minutes. But if I really had to do that, possibly it could be something that would be in a good detailed sketch. So that's the only cheating that you do is you do a detailed sketch and then it becomes an impressionist painting in 20 minutes or whatever, whatever. If we got an, an hour to shoot, we shoot it for an hour and paint and talk and you might have to carry the conversation while I paint. <laughs> well, that would be a challenge for me to carry a conversation. <laughs> but tell me about the painting behind you. What, what's that? Um, this was uh, actually, remember when you did the uh, Cosmic Cruiser um, um, Cosmic Cruiser video with that good looking blonde girl at, um, at Plunkett's? Oh, Jessica. She was, yeah, she right, was, remember, right. she so this was, was one there, of the yeah. cars that was close to me, um, actually parked next to me behind the van kind of thing. And I decided to paint it paint the car and uh, the guy wanted to buy it, but I wanted to bring it home and do the grill. Right. And uh, I decided I didn't want to sell it. <laughs> you know what? Because it's just been too much artwork that I've done over the years. And until about seven, no, I'm going to say five years ago. So about five years ago, I never had any artwork in the house because everything was always commissioned and everything was always gone. Right. Mm -hmm. So now I'm, I, I was liking the idea that, um, that I want to keep some of my old, some of my artwork period. Like, you know what I mean? So now I have at least 30 or 40 pieces here, all different kinds of automotive pieces. You know what I mean? And, um, some are better than others. Uh, this one here was painted right during the show, probably about, I don't know, two or three hours, whatever. I don't know. But I didn't want to, at the end of the day, I really didn't want to sell it. So, well, I that was one of the, yeah, that was one of the last Fleetwood Country Cruise Inns in London at Steve, Steve Plunkett Estate, which is, I think there was only one more after that. Yeah. And I mean, it's just, uh, it's a shame to see it go. Uh, oh, he's not doing it. It was a great show. What you, if not the best, one of the best car shows in in all of Canada. Oh, uh, easily. Yeah, easily. We're, um, uh, well, the the level that 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 he put together was just incredible with all the all the stars that used to come out and everything. And uh, uh, you know, it's just some place that you had to be if you're a car guy. That's for sure. Yeah, and well, uh, that was my my second year, I think. That when when I did that show, and the first one we won the uh, best custom, and that was pretty good with a forty three year old vehicle. <laughs> yeah, well, twenty nineteen I think was the last year for his show, wasn't was it? it? Twenty nineteen or twenty eighteen? Seventeen, eighteen, maybe eighteen. Yeah. Well, anyway, you know. Uh, yeah. It was sad that it went, and it was sad the way it went. And you know, Steve got pissed off at a lot of people, <laughs> as yeah. you know. Well, and it you know the show hit its peak, I think, when <clears throat> in two two of the years when he had Adam West, Batman, George Barris, the Batmobile. Um, he had um, Julie Newmar was there, Catwoman, um, some American Graffiti stars. Candy Clark. And then there was the other year when they featured all the, the Dukes of Hazard stuff. They had um, some, some of the cast members from the Dukes came and that attracted. Yeah. A they were, they were there the year that I was there too. Yeah. I think they came out two or three times. Well, yeah. the Barris crew definitely came out after, after George passed away, they were there. And that's, that's when I got the George Barris award. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The very first, uh, Memorial George Barris Award, me got. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's, that is a, that's a real honor. Um, but you know, it's 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 a deserved honor. You deserve that because 
with the cruiser, in my mind, that thing is has become an iconic piece of custom automotive art, rolling sculpture, especially on the Canadian um, car culture landscape. It's an important piece. And what you've done is, uh, I think, important. And it will, it, it has become a big part of history. And you're still creating new history every year with the thing now. Um, and I think you're going to be making another mark when you finally do get to Ottawa, because I know that uh, you're still going to come up there whenever we get back to a physical auto show, hopefully this coming March. That would be something else. So me and you, me and you, we're going to have to sit down and see if we're going to repaint her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll leave, I'll leave the real artwork to you when it comes to the paint. No, no, I, I, I just want to get a, um, get a second opinion because you're, you're, you're out there with the marketing and you're out there with the, uh, with the television show and all that other stuff, very knowledgeable person. So I'd rather throw something at you and get some feedback than just do it on my own. I like throwing opinions out. Yeah. I do it on a daily basis, as you know, you know. Swing back in. You're getting out of camera there. I can't see you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. What, what did I do? Oh, yeah, yeah. When I, I put it down, wait. Yeah, because you, you moved so we can I, see. I put it. Turn. No, no. What I did is I put the phone down and wasn't paying attention. I put the phone down again, and I'm swinging around in the seat. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when you asked me to, to show you the picture? Yes, yes. Yeah. So it's so been almost an hour here tonight. Um, yeah. You know, there's all kinds of stuff we could talk about. And, we're, and we're, I'm going to have you back on to uh, mm -hmm. to discuss other things, not just the cruiser, but other car culture things in in the in the weeks. Maybe, ahead. maybe. Hey, you know what? I think people would probably enjoy. Uh, hopefully, I was hoping that next weekend, but in the next two or three weeks, not next now, because I'm going to go to the that van show. So yeah. next week is going to be cruiser week. I got to do a few things that I want to do to it and, uh, and get it ready for, for, for the trip down there. But then after that, I think I may be ready to put my 55 on the ground. And it, if nothing else, put some glass in it in bare metal and put it outside for a little photo opportunity. Even if it isn't bare metal, we can still do a nice video roll around uh, kind of thing. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So within the month, within the month, I should be able to tighten up. Uh, for instance, I don't have the hood mounted, right? So I have to, I have to make my own hinges, decide on what kind of hinge I'm going to put in and all that kind of stuff. And uh, mount the hit hood hinges. The fenders are bolted, but I got to do some trimming still. Uh, get the gaps right because, you know, it, you know, at at this point there is no gaps in the doors because the door panel is just a panel by itself. It hasn't had the final edge put on it yet. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. So once I dial that in, I think it would be a good good time to uh to do a little photo shoot and we can talk about it or use the pictures if you have the pictures you we can use the pictures to discuss the build cool okay well with all that being said ivan thank you so much for spending the past hour with us tonight um it's My been pleasure. a real privilege um i just hope that Everything works out, and we get you up to Ottawa uh, next March. And well, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to it. That's why uh, I keep I keep going, and I'm keep ticking because whatever is supposed to happen will happen if we make it to Ottawa. If yes. we don't make it to Ottawa, nothing will happen. That was supposed to happen. 
Well, you know, man, it was going to be, it was going to be stellar. Just, we had the Felino supercar. Um, yeah. We had a Christine car. We had um, some Fast and Furious cars. We had, what else did we have coming? Batmobile. We had, uh, um, of course, all the Lamborghinis coming as usual. I say as usual, but it's always, you know, a, a new selection. Yeah. Um, all the car companies, new stuff, a record number of electric vehicles, the newest technology on display, uh, automotive aftermarket guys coming in with their exhibits, just um, and the Hollywood Star Cars exhibit in that year hey, was going to be great. You just reminded me of something. I got a Lamborghini story, quick story. Okay. Lamborghini meets Cosmic Cruiser. So, uh, I, I'm, I'm in Toronto. Where, where's that section? Uh, I forget the name of it. You know, that real richy section in Toronto with all the restaurants and the shops and all that? I don't go to the ritzy section. Yorkville. Yorkville, York, Yorkville. Okay. <laughs> anyway, real, real ritzy neighborhood, right? Yeah. And there's this, there's uh, Lamborghini is parked on the side of the road, right? And uh, I know that the owner is somewhere in one of those restaurants that's keeping an eye on it. So then I pull up, and I'm about a couple of cars behind. And absolutely everybody that was on the street, I was near the street, comes over and starts taking pictures of the cruiser. Lamborghini got zero. <laughs> that just then, to show you. Then it's not over yet. Then a guy, and he must have been a basketball player, but he pulls up in a real nice 70-ish Rolls Royce. This, Mind you, this is 1980. Pulls up in this Rolls Royce, right? Gets out of the car, opens the door for the lady, brings her out to the restaurant where I was sitting, you know, on the patio, yeah. sits her down. Now all eyes are on him. And then he walks over to his trunk, pulls out this huge camera, walks over to the cruiser, and starts taking pictures. And all eyes are on him. It was, it was. I was just chuckling. Just look oh. at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. No, that's, I that's told you, you need a radical. That's great. Yeah. Well, people will be taking a lot of pictures in March when we get back to a physical auto show. And there you go. Up to the Capitol and cruise on into the Shaw Center and uh, and park it in there for a few days so that the public can come in and see it up close and uh, and meet you in person, the man behind the Cosmic Cruiser. <laughs> yeah, so I told them, don't get too old by the time we, they open the back venue back up. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Every day that goes by, I feel the aches and pains more myself. So I mean, I by the, hey, by the time it, by the time, by the time that happens, I may be using a walker. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not, man. I hope, I hope, in, until that happens, though, you stay safe and you stop acting like an adult. <laughs> stop, yeah, stop take it. it, take it out more often, right? That's right. I, I was yeah. so silly, but you know what it is. I I got I got crazy with working on the um, on the fifty five. So every day I was pushing and using all the energy I ever had. So then, if I'm tired, I really don't think I want to wheel that thing around. You know what I mean? Like it's just not fun when you're not when you're tired. Yeah. It's only fun when you're all juiced up and ready to go. You know what I mean? It's like. It's yeah. like riding a horse, you know, when you want to get on it. Yeah, well, it's not a it's not a compact car. It's not a Volkswagen Beetle or a Nissan Micra. It's a yeah, it takes a certain concentration. Yes, to drive, especially if you're in traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah you'll be that. running over people's Good. feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did take it. I went to uh, a couple weeks ago. I went to my grandson's to deliver some flowers some perennials i had to make a corner a real tight corner i had to make a corner sure enough the car in the turning lane yeah on the corner real tight corner is a cop car 
So <laughs> I'm cranking it, right? I'm going, yeah, I don't even want to go near him. I don't want to scare him. <laughs> you don't want so, to, you do not want to touch that. No. So I, I made the corner, and as I'm coming around, he's smiling at me, waving. <laughs> I didn't even come near him. Of course, he wondered. <laughs> okay. Well, Ivan, I, I think with that, we'll wrap up for tonight. And uh, again, thank you so much for spending the time with us and doing Anytime, this. Anytime, buddy. Yeah. Just call. All right. I All will, right. And we'll have you back well, on. You did. We're on. All right. There thank you, you go. Sir. And a new phone. Do you believe that, eh? Yeah. Well, I you went shopping and bought a, bought a new phone because the other one, the speaker went. It worked fine, but the speaker phone, I couldn't hear it. Well, you. And by the way, whatever you fixed, you fixed. You sounded good. Yeah. Yeah. We got it working. All right, Rick. All right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. I'm glad you thought of me first. First one. First. First. First live guest, on, period, on, on a live Auto little Station podcast. Network. Yep. Right on, right on the money. All right. Thank, Thank you very much, sir. All right. Take care, Ivan. See you soon. Bye. See ya. You're watching the Autos 360 Network.